Welcome everyone, you are tuning in to Engaging Walk. My name is Drake. And my name is Ruby. We believe in the power of walking together and talking together. It's a simple act to stay connected and movement is key. This week we will discuss the concept of growing in faith together as a couple. And how you and your significant other can take time and make deep connections. So this week we did a lot of Engaging Walks. We did some in Chula Vista, uh, which is our official Engaging Walk for this week. But we also did some in Fiesta Island. Mm-hmm. Um... We did some in like Balboa Park, I think. Well, that was actually a while ago. And then we did Escondido. Escondido, Temecula, and then um, what else? Uh, Little Italy. Yeah, we've been going to Italy, Little Italy a lot. Ote Ranch. Mm-hmm. Because they, those have good dog park. Yes, we've been taking yeah. dope over there. and um, But this week we wanted to discuss with you guys this uh, very important topic of growing in faith together as a couple. Mm-hmm. Um. So one of the very important things about discussing um, the importance of this topic is that we did a um, a lot. We did a few shorts, uh, some videos on the um, importance of getting really getting to know each other during that dating stage. Mm -hmm. And then this is one of the topics that you're going to really have to discuss, which is where are you at with faith? Uh, What's your faith? And then like um, where you see yourself growing with that with your with your partner. Mm -hmm. Um, So, Ruby, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Sure, like you said, that uh, you know, it's a very core thing that that hold the marriage together. And um, one of my mentors used to say that you know, um, the main thing that leads to divorce is that different belief. And because if you look at that, it's very a core thing that you do it, and it's blending so well into your lifestyle and the way you think, and um, the way you respond to life. And that's you know that is your your belief. And so if it's different, it's gonna bring a lot of contradictions and argument. And you know, so having the same belief would just you know give you a lot of peace over that. Just like if you look into you know we 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 have been seeing it through you know raising up our dog Boba because we have certain things that we want her to carry, you know, and then um, also like um, we also talk we have so like have been taking parenting class one hundred one from you know Kylo show, and we can see that you know um, to go through this and we have a lot of similar similarities because we share the same faith, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think we we definitely had some uh, friends comment on like, wow, you guys are on the same page with like how you want her to act and all that. Yeah. And that's a that's a really important thing when it comes to children. Um, So, you know, like one of the main points of marriage is to grow in your family and to have children. And um, and if you have a very similar value system and if you have a very similar um, way of looking at um, not just uh, like things that are mm-hmm. important for you, but things that are important for the family in general, mm-hmm. then you have like an outside goal that's outside of just you yeah. and what your needs are. Mm-hmm. And that is more a lot more conducive to raising a family. Um, and especially if you have a very similar outlook on faith and then like all the things that go into that, because faith isn't just like belief in God. Faith is all the other things that come with that. All mm-hmm. the other things that God has said, like, hey, this is how you should live your life. Yeah. You know, and it actually has a lot of similarities to dogs. Like, <laughs> like uh, almost like God, like we're like God's dogs. Like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, if you think about it, because like the way that we've been talking about this lately is like, okay, well, Boba wants to do her own thing. Mm-hmm. But we have things that we want her to do. And yeah. we're a lot smarter than Boba. We know a lot more about the world. And, That's true. And... If she does what we tell her, then she gets to go to the dog park. She gets to have great treats, a lot more freedom. And she's, and most importantly, she's safe because she makes a lot of unsafe decisions on her own. Mm-hmm. She's a puppy. It's understandable. Yeah. But she has to follow our way. And when she does it, her life is a lot better. And I think it's pretty similar with us and God that we have our own ways of doing things that are not very good. Mm-hmm. And then God was like, hey, you know what? This is the way you're actually sp- supposed to do things. Mm-hmm. And then we might not want to do it that way. But once we do, oh, wow, I get all these other things that come along with it. Yeah. And then, you know, like because she's still a pup. So, you know, as a baby, you know, stage, 
you know, the parents to really on the pa- the baby to form them. So, you know, but God also give us free choice, you know, and the free choice come along the way when, you know, once we know what is good, what is not, what is, you know, beneficial to us, then, you know, making choice is easier, you know, and it's become benefit to, to, to the person. And I think it's, you know, having the same faith also bring a lot of uh, clarity in the way we communicate with the children. Imagine like dad say this, mom say that. And then yeah. was like, okay, what's going on? Which, would, which way should I, I go, you know? And then so having the same faith and agree on certain thing and, you know, discuss before it happened, that's just, you know, what it's supposed to do. That um, that will bring a lot of clarity and, you know, lessen the, the argument or, you know, disagreement happening, you know, along the way. And um, so one thing that, you know, um, one of the scripture that the pastor speak over, uh, spoke over our marriage before we get into that, he said like in Psalm 127 that the Lord is the one that built the foundation. You know, we, we not just, um, of course, you know, we, we, we say, we, we make a commitment, we make, make a covenant with each other, but our covenant also based on the foundations of God's words. You know, we follow that is our, our, our belief, that is our foundations of the marriage. And, um, and that's our guideline, you know, because nowadays you can see like um, ru- even rules and, you know, things that change with the trains. And, and for me, if I'm not Christians, I will be confused with things because it's not clarity. It's, it's just a lot of changing and yeah. not... There's a whole lot of confusion out there. And so I think, um, you know, um, God's word, it just bring a lot of clarity and, and just so much life into it because he, he promised like, hey, I bring life and I am the truth. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, and um, this concept actually goes hand in hand with um, a topic that we brought up a mm-hmm. few times, but we want to dive into it again. Um, maybe we got some new listeners uh, we actually we do have definitely have some new listeners. Want to give you guys a shout out. Saw some new people down in Florida, uh, the UK, yes. uh, Oregon, mm-hmm. Arizona. Lots Ooh. of new places popping up. We really thank you guys for tuning in and really appreciate you guys. So if you might not have heard this, we have like a thing that we really like to an analogy that we like to use called the two cups in a bowl. Mm-hmm. And this relates to what Ruby was just talking about with Psalm one two seven, where um. You have something in the center of your relationship, and then you have a bowl. So in this case, the bowl represents our relationship. It's like the marriage. It, the marriage. And we each have our own cups that we bring to the marriage. Yeah. And if our cups aren't full, then we can't bring anything to the bowl. We can't Mm-mm. bring anything to the marriage. Nope. And if the bowl is not filled, or if our cup is filled, but we're not bringing it to the bowl, then... Some, yeah. You know, there's some kind of problem that's going on. That's true. So uh, one of the main th- important things to think about that is what is going inside your cup? Mm-hmm. You know, so what is fulfilling you in your life? Yeah. Um, it could be hobbies. It could be your interests. Mm-hmm. Um, you just want to make sure that there are things that like aren't going to poke a leak underneath the bottom of your cup. Yeah. You know, whatever like, that you do is to able to feel you instead of, you know, suck the water out of you. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, and you have that to bring to your marriage. Yeah. Now, God, when you like the the whole point of that is like that God is the foundation of your marriage. Mm-hmm. So underneath, if you will, like the the, the table that's holding up the bowl mm-hmm. is is God. Yeah, the and foundation that, that provides like the structure to all of that. Yeah. Um. So. And then you have you, your personal faith, mm-hmm. right? And then how does that fill up your cup? Like my responsible, like one of, you know, um, one of the mother and the spiritual mother is Miranda. Cause I was struggling like, okay, you guys talking about, uh, become one, but, but what about my personal calling? Right. And what about my, um, goal with God, personal walk with God, you know, cause everyone have different walks with God, you know, and that is the beauty of marriage because you get to blend in, you know? With Which is the a lot person. easier to do when you have the same faith. 
and the same growth and the same, you know, running the race. Like you, you two, a strong runner, and you don't wait for the other person to get, you know, stronger. You run with them, and that's a beautiful picture. Um, so she said that Ruby, you in charge of your life. You in charge. What I'm trying to say is that I am responsible of my growth in faith. I cannot depend on Drake, but. I what well, we would do together, but still, I in charge of to fill my cup with, with God's words, with um, God presence, and then with pos- uh, whatever that I allow in to fill my cup. Is it posi- positive right. or is it negative? You know, whatever that I try to fill in, because whatever that I fill in, the overflow will go to the to the bowl. So, you know, like if you know, I seem if which is we have been gone through you know some up and downs this you know couple of weeks and to be honest like i start looking into my bowl i'm like okay there's some down and what is it what caused that you know and that is where i come back to you know to god and ask the holy spirit and like holy spirit what's going on how do we fix this you know and and of course he was telling me like yep well, not right away, but like when I sit a moment spending time with him and say, yep, do you want to hear what it is? And they're like, okay, sure, go ahead. And he usually would tell me like this coming up because you haven't deal with that. Or, you know, like this is a deeper level to to look into um, the, the past wound or the past, you know, incident that you that did, you didn't get to heal well. And and that's a, op- that's a beautiful opportunity when you get to look back and, and become whole with God, you know? So it won't have that journey if we don't have, we, we don't maintain uh, our cup, you know, be be filled with God, be filled with positive, you know? Mm-hmm. And and I think that, um, yeah, that, um, and and the beautiful of, do you have anything with no, the... Keep going with that thought. I have and, something afterwards. And then, you know, when, when you, when we are so full of life and, and, and the, and the presence of God and peace, because he said like his, his presence is peaceful, it's full of love, it's full of joy. And, you know, that what we want to bring to the marriage, right? you know, <laughs> who know, who never, no one I'm going to say, Oh, I don't want a happy marriage. I don't want a fun marriage and one you know so um so that's what we want to want to bring to the marriage and um and you get to share that with uh with 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 the other person and one thing that you know i appreciate about about having drake along the way because now i can see the reason why he got you know brought us together because there's certain things that not my my strength but there he is because his cup is he he has his own journey with the Lord, and that is his strength. Which is, if he see a vision, he make it happen. I see v- lots of visions, but slowly make it happen because I'm a perfectionist. Which is, God doesn't call me to do that, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm growing. You know, I'm trying to like learning that lesson even you know deeper. But for Drake, is that his strength? Like Ruby, you can do it. So one of the things to share that is that I have a vision with God to do. Uh, in education field, which is open a kindergarten right. for over 10 years. Now, Drake saw that. And this year, he said he just like one day as we talk about, you know, vision. And then he just went right into the laptop, sign up for my company, uh, my, 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 my name, right? Yeah, we uh, registered your LLC, did yeah. the, the business paperwork. And um, yeah, it was it was a fun day. <laughs> and for me, I was confused. I'm like, what are you doing? Because I'm in the midst of sharing my vision. <laughs> and he's like, this is making your visions come true. I said, yeah, but I haven't done this and this and this and this. You know, have a list. I said, yeah, but it's going to come a- along the way. It's just a starting point, Ruby. You need to start. So come back to, you know, the pictures of two cups in a bowl. When you f- get to fill your cup full with, you know, good- goodness, of course your bowl is going to fill with that. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, some of the other things, yeah, that's uh, that's wonderful. It's, thank you for that. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, Ruby definitely has her own strengths and um, that are not my strengths at all. Um, yeah, I definitely will, like, I'm very, like, focused and, like, goal-oriented. Like, oh, mm-hmm. this is my goal. I'm going to make it happen. You know, I wish I could do that 
more diligently with my weight. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we'll I've been there, there before. We I've been get there, there before. I, you know, so. But in terms of like like work production, yeah, if I find something, I'll get it done. Mm-hmm. Especially if I know like how to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but what Ruby is really great at that I'm not at, I'm not so great at, is she's very intentional and she's very uh, into putting putting her goals and the things that she wants to do written down and documented yes. and put throughout the house. For sure. <laughs> Whereas for me, they all kind of just stay in my head. And those two skills combined allow us allow our productivity and our um, output to be a lot greater than they would be if there was just each other, on, just one another, like on our own. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been really, that's been a really great and unique thing that like we've seen that like when God bring, brought us together that like it took a while for us to figure that out and then we're still figuring that out, mm-hmm. but we have been able to accomplish a lot um, with just the understanding that we have so far. Do you have any, um, do you want to share anything about that? We ha- what we have done for growing our faith together? Yeah, I think one of the things that we've done is... Oh, um, sorry, before you start, um, just, just, just so you guys know that we are Christian, but then uh, I used to be a Buddhist, and then I found Jesus when I was 16, and then I, you know commit my life to Jesus and when I was 17 woo woo and then um Drake he 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 grew up in Christianity and but then but we are we are different um denomination would we'll, we'll say yeah i grew up in a more a very much traditional um sect of christianity called greek orthodox and i was considered more like charismatic yeah or pentecost yeah so like at All the, the churches that ruby has taken to one. me taking me to is like <laughs> there's like singing there's dancing on, celebrate jesus you know whereas <laughs> in my church and like people wear like flip-flops and like sand you know and like uh, they shirts. wear nice clothes too yeah people do it's wear not flip-flops, about so. out you know outside it's about inside on fire for jesus the 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 point is at a greek orthodox church <laughs> you won't find anybody men at yeah. least not wearing a suit mm-hmm. it's it's that is like what you're supposed to wear is a suit yeah. And then like women wear dresses. Okay. And um that's very rigid, very structured. Mm-hmm. You know, um the sermon is always delivered in uh I'm pretty sure it's called Byzantine Greek. It's an it's an archaic form of Greek. It's not even wow. the Greek that people speak now. Mm-hmm. Uh modern Greek or mm-hmm. contemporary Greek. It's very similar to like Catholic mass, which is usually in Latin, mm-hmm. they keep it in the same language. But wow, that's that's fascinating. But anyways, um, some of the things that we do to grow in our faith together. <laughs> Can is, I share something? It's jumped in my head. Yeah. Jumped on my head. So what, you know, a lot of Christian when they dating, like okay, they the moment they find out you're Christian, you're Christian, great, hallelujah. But then the moment they realize that oh, we are a totally different denomination, that was like. Mm, Nah, I'm not sure. Well, the journey. So I, I also have the same thing to be honest. But then I went back to my mentor, and 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 they all, two of them, women of God, women of God, and he said like, Ruby, is this person have the personal walk with the Lord? Do does this person love the Lord? Does this person pray to the Lord and worship the Lord? If yes, I don't see the problem. Yeah, that's. I don't see what's what's why why not you know because at the end of the day the Holy Spirit will be with that person and that Holy Spirit will guide that person to the truth, of course you know, and then as we discuss more about it and I love Miranda Nelson she a woman of full of wisdom he said like Ruby, you know what, and the and she study about theology deeply understand the you know the culture and she's. When she shared about it, I before I knew him that like Greek Orthodox, there's some traditions of Greek is beautiful. Like the communion, they 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 not just like I mean like from our church we usually have we usually have like a cup with a piece of bread, yeah, and then the tiny juice. But for the Greek, they have like a party. I mean like they have a real bread deep into real the wine. real wine and eat it and break it. I was like everybody from the church drinks from the same cup. 
and, and uses like the same uh, things might have been different after covid i'm not really <laughs> sure but pre covid if like there's 150, 200, 300 people. It's kind of gross, but... but <laughs> They're all you drink it out of the same cup. But, you know, like, when your mind... They can, wipe it, but <laughs> no, no, the but, same but, cup. But, no, 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 I, I, I will tell you another gross thing, but um, <laughs> from our church, but... No, denomination, not church. Um, <laughs> um, like, no, but, like, when is that... that because you share thing. It's, like, your deep connected with each other you know spiritual and that's for me it's beautiful to be honest like wow because not you know the traditions have the meaning deep and deep down in that and i love that you know because that that's beautiful yeah yeah Yeah, there's a lot of like interesting things that happen too um if we go to the one day we're going to go to the greek islands but there's a lot of things that happened during the uh, the Nazi uh, invasion mm-hmm. in terms of like uh, there was one horrific thing that happened. But like the Greeks take the things that happened and then like use them to uh, to build on it mm-hmm. so that there was a church. It's pre- pretty similar stories that happened throughout the Nazi invasion. But it happened in Greece where they took like all the village people and put them into the church and then burned the church down. Ooh. So that was sad. That's pretty sad. But they take the the they took the clock, uh-huh. the burnt clock, the one, the one part of it that like I guess like somewhat survived, and then they used it as like the when they rebuilt the church. Wow. As like the the burnt clock is there as like mm-hmm. a reminder of like you know what the people have gone through, mm-hmm. and they've gone through a lot of you know genocide things like that, but they still maintain the traditions from the era of like the very foundations of the church, which is, you know, which is cool, but it, it does lead to a bit of like, like stagnation. Like there's, Mm -hmm. you know, there is a lot of joy and, um, and like freedom Mm -hmm. in, in doing worship, like a different way and doing it with music, which is perfect for me because I'm a musician Mm -hmm. and like, I always felt connected playing to God, playing music. Yeah. I always thought of not always, but as I got older and I got more, you know, experience, I thought, I was like, oh, this is, this is God's language. Yeah. That's how I thought of it. Once I really understood it, mm-hmm. like how, like harmonious it is. Yeah. The whole point of it is just to create harmony and, mm-hmm. you know, but anyway, so the, that was one of the things that like, kind of, I was like, oh, what? They play music? Like they, mm-hmm. you know, they dance and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Like Greek church, they just do hymns. They do what's called like Byzantine hymns. Uh-huh. Um, but so after like some time, I was like, oh, I'll play in the worship music and that'd be fun. And like, and it's been a, a really great experience because, you know, you have to also have a lot of um, like life wisdom in that, in that, in that uh, process, because, you know, there's so many things that go into when you play music with other people and there's so many things that can pop up that if you don't have... <laughs> The, but how is your faith growing that through the that? The faith grows because you you have to spend that time and dedicate the music to God and mm-hmm. not worry so much about all the other things that can come with it. Yeah. Like, um, oh, I'm playing with this person or like, why am I playing this instrument instead of that? You cast all that things aside and you say, well, what's the important thing? I'm here to play music to celebrate the Lord and to talk and to bring the atmosphere in Mm -hmm. the, for the congregation to receive the message. Yeah. And like all of that is like, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, it's like, Oh, there's, there's a deeper meaning behind what we're doing. So when you like, when us get to know each other denomination is, it's, it's just like, you know, God, Christianity is a big umbrella where, you know, there's so many, families in there and family have different culture of course you know there are certain things that i see you know some tradition is like is not biblical and um and some like very you know very very clearly like god said like jesus is my the ultimate you know so you, you don't pray to other you pray to him and um so, but I can see, I can, I learn a lot 
uh, of traditions and you know the history of the church by getting to know Drake and um, and I also go th- some research for Greek Orthodox and I love the church because it's like a dome when you look up you look like you feel like you look up to the heaven and and there's there is a the cloud of witnesses and there's saints that looking down people that go before you is I feel like. Greek Orthodox also carry a lot of uh, honoring the people before the faith that they say, hey, this person have contributed this to the church. And I think that's beautiful. You know, let's moving back to, um, you know, growing faith together. So because we recognize two differences, you know, um, not two differences, like differences, differences uh, between our faith. And so growing together also like bringing back to the bowl also make it, you know, some at judgment so one thing that we do is that we pray and worship together that means um remember his style and my style totally different and um and then so by 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 you know pray and worship together we sometimes we put on on music and you know and then maybe you know that he will take lead of playing the guitar and then i would just do the singing or sometimes i play you know keyboard a little bit and then or we can just do a random music and then we feel with the lord what's what he moving and and just doing simple thing like that i see i feel like our spiritual can grow together you know we yeah. we start finding the pace of each other yeah we also do um bible readings um but at night and sometimes during the day mm-hmm. um we we would like to do more of this, but like, uh, but w- <laughs> yeah. well, one of the things that our goal is to do a lot more of um, spending time with God in nature. Mm-hmm. We have done a little bit, but we d- we definitely want to do some more. Our main goal is to go up to Yosemite mm-hmm. and to really just take that in. And um, so I think that is probably one of the ways that like I became like a lot more closer to God was. At Yosemite, actually, mm-hmm. um, maybe seven, eight years ago, yeah, or maybe a little bit longer. I went there, and and I hiked up the Yosemite Falls, and I looked, and then I was like, "Wow, yeah, this this isn't by accident." Yeah, this, see this beautiful landscape. Mm-hmm. This beautiful. It looks like I just fell into a painting, <laughs> and it can't be That's by beautiful. accident. Yeah, it can't like this. The beauty of of nature, the beauty, the beauty of of, of Earth, mm-hmm. and the fact that like we get to like, and I remember it, it hit me. I was like, you know, I get to actually, I like it, even that's crazy that like, you know, this body of mm-hmm. flesh and bones can think and yeah. can experience this painting that was created. Yeah, and I get to that's experience true. it, think it, live it, mm-hmm. and that can't be because you know, just some dust came around and well, whatever, you <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Like there, there, there's purpose and there's, mm-hmm. and there's beauty to it. And beauty doesn't come from just by accident. It's design. Yeah. Amen. You know, like if you thought, like if you saw an iPhone and you didn't know, like if like, Oh, where did this iPhone come from? Or you, you'd mm-hmm. never seen it before. And someone was like, Oh, it's just been here for a long time. And you're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess it's just been here. Well, no, there's design to it. Yeah. And that's the way that our universe works. There's design to it. Yeah. So that was like when that really became aware of that and like mm-hmm. became closer to God um, through that. And that's something that we want to do a lot more of. But we've also gone to conferences together. Mm-hmm. Life Surge was a really great one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a Christian conference. Christian conferences. And so, you know, like the... Again, go back to the two cups and a bowl because the way I steward my relationship with God is totally different than how Drake steward. Now, the beauty of bringing it to the bowl is that I get to experience how he uh, experienced it. Like for me, just give me the journal, okay? I just <laughs> write it down with music and then or I just give me, um, you know, soaking music and I just spend time with the Lord or I just go to church and then, you know, or... Uh, I usually go to find glory, just soak into the goodness of God. Just, just leave me there, 
you know, and feed me food. That's it. <laughs> and 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 I love doing that. But for for him, he 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 wants to to stay in the, the nature. Not that I don't love the nature, but if for me, I will be distracted with birds, with tree, with you know, my my mind was like wander around the nature. Yeah, there was that book that you gave me that kind of highlighted as to like that might be like more of a masculine or or male thing that God wants us to do, mm-hmm. and it's like it, it actually sp- uh, speaks a lot of truth because. So many of God's revelations came to men when they climbed a mountain, literally climbed a mountain. Yeah. Like um, like Moses climbing the mountain and getting the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. That there's something that happens to you as a man when up you're up the there. Mountain. Yes. You go through the arduous journey of getting up there. And yep. then, you know, there's an odd thing that happens when you're climbing a mountain where you're like, there's, you think it's like going to be like one hill or like one long upward motion. <laughs> yeah. But... Sorry, I just have something weird in my head. <laughs> but sometimes what ends up happening is you climb up and you're like, oh, man, I finally made it. Yeah. And then you realize, no, you're just halfway there. Uh-huh. You yeah. just got to oh, yes. one part of the peak. And oh, the, yes. And you that still got to go a lot way that, further That would be up. me. And I think that that's like what God wants you to go through. Yeah. Of like the submission to the mountain. Yeah. You know, where... Once you get to the top, you're tired. You're like, oh, man. And then you see it. the view and you're like, okay, yeah, yeah this is what it. I was supposed to see. Now things are in perspective. Yep. You know, and then so that's where God's message comes for, I think, for a lot of men when they go through arduous journeys to get to a peak. And then mm-hmm. once they get to that peak, now they're ready to listen. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. So, you know, I get um, I'm excited for your, your same day because. I get to see you and your elements. That's what I say. Um, you know, and then you get to see me. We always, he always seen a lot because, you know, I'm I always at church and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we at home journaling. So, yeah. Um, and then you just do things together. And I think that that will just enrich my spiritual walk with God as well as I see you growing and then it's a win-win because you know as i is you no know, is no longer i is is we so if i win in this you know or i grow in this you get to grow it too because i will share with you you know mm-hmm. so i think that's beautiful and um to be, to have a like intentional in in in, in your plans uh, in your growing um for me i would do you know like uh, overview of the month of, of of the year and i will say okay lord what do you want me to learn this year and he will certainly highlight and that's something that i do for years certainly highlight character things or topic that he will you know speak to me over the year <laughs> and right. um and then also like i will schedule my fasting i'll say okay lord these you know and because i believe in god moving to he will we live in time. He live out of time, and his timing is depends on. Um, no, not depends on. He move with you know a Hebrew calendar with just you know all the festival, and and when you read into deep dive deep down into the the Bible, like there's certain time in the year that God have open heaven. He moved powerfully, so. Um, of course, we have a Holy Spirit, but those those time is the peak of you know the movement, and um, so those things I repair myself by fasting, praying, you know, and 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 you know be intentional with that because because God said like whoever seek me with with all their heart they will find me you mm-hmm. know and and I love the chosen because one one script of of Jesus saying to his disciple like the reason he speak uh the parables because he won uh, he doesn't want passive follower he want intentional follower that those that seeker you know seek him you know so yeah yeah shout out to the chosen is a great show if you haven't seen for it for sure uh, last thing that we want to talk about uh, really quick before we end today's uh, episode um, is the importance of having a community. Mm-hmm. And re- I think regardless if you're, you know, if you're listening this far, you're probably Christian. If not, and you're maybe like, oh, not. maybe you not. Know. And you're like, oh, hey, this Christianity stuff sounds pretty cool. Yeah. You know, definitely check out, um, uh, check like read read some scriptures, all that kind of stuff. And or then check like, out Chosen. Check out Chosen would be a great way for you to get to know, um, you know what Jesus is all about, what yeah. the faith is all about. Um, and, um, you know, there's plenty of material out there. And mm-hmm. then, of, of course, our podcast. We will definitely talk about this topic more than just 
in this episode. Yeah. Um, but anyways, well, the importance of community for for people just in general, mm-hmm. um, especially for people like us, um, because Ruby, Ruby and I are transplants, I guess is what you call them. People that live way far away from like where they grew up. And oh. I grew up in Boston and <laughs> Ruby funny. grew up in Vietnam. Yeah. And the other side of the Pacific. Yeah. We live and we both live in San Diego. So uh-huh. pretty much our network of support here is us, our primary network. Our, you know, Ruby has a little bit of family here. I do not. Mm-hmm. Um, the only other people that I have here are people from work. And, you know, I spend so much time with them at work that I don't really want to spend time with them after work. <laughs> Um, but Ruby, but we also have our, our, our church. Yeah. We have members of our church to turn to in case of an emergency or just for hanging out or doing Bible study or for, or do um, life together. That just doing life together. Yeah. Um, and just having that, that constant like check-in like every Sunday, like, oh, Hey, here's some, here's people that we, we get to see all the time and check in with and, mm-hmm. and have conversation and just having that anchor in the community yeah, is really important. And I think that uh, a lot of people, especially with social media and internet and video games, are spending a lot of time alone. Yeah. And that time alone, you know, hey, everyone needs their alone time, but we also need connection. We also yeah. need community. Person, um, person to person, in person, you know, connection. And I think like, especially like, well, we're still looking for, you know, marriage community um, that, you know, love the Lord and on fire because they will be the one that, you know, we can bounce back and forth our challenge, encourage the, along the way. And, um, also we, uh, we believe in mentorship, you know, like those that go before us, um, and they have so much wisdom that we can learn for, le- learn from. And, um, we shout out to, um, three, we have three, you know, spiritual parents and, and then, I mean, six of them, but like, three couples <laughs> <laughs> um they agree they like every time we in trouble not in trouble but like we seek you know advice they they always be there and like they love to share you know and they i so honor them because they say thank you for sharing thank you for welcoming me into your life like yeah we need you <laughs> so i think yeah, that's and a they're beauty. older they're older than we are so they've they've been there done that yeah, you and know, they, which is always great to have people that have been there and done that. Yeah, and then especially like their marriage is glooming, you know, and you and glowing. You want to learn from those people. You yeah, know? absolutely. So I think you know, uh, one that is one of the good tip for for um, you know um, marriage to grow in faith. That's to have a spiritual parents to to grow with you and hold your accountability. Because for me, um, you know, as as we're single, I will always go to my mentor and say, hey, if you see something that I've done not really, you know, right, or if you see a learning curve for me, let me know so that I can grow, you know, because my point is to grow. Yeah. So do you want to talk about the assignment? Uh, oh, yeah. Before we get into the assignment, um, one of the things that I saw is that um, our episode about Boba the Corgi got a lot more views than like our, <laughs> our, our, our some of our other videos. Some of our other view, view, videos got a lot more views than um, than that one, but people really like talk, us talking about boba. Mm-hmm. So if you want to know more ideas or more information about like raising a puppy, uh, things that were specifically corgi, specifically corgi stuff, let us know in the comments. We can make videos for you guys. Uh, we tend to, we also saw some people are popping up on YouTube. So if you share this content with if you like this content share it with mm-hmm. people let them know what we're doing and mm-hmm. um help the to help the podcast grow because we love you guys we love doing this for you yeah. we love uh reaching out to people and growing um the community of healthy relationships mm-hmm. and healthy marriages and helping couples uh achieve the goal of marriage yeah um, which should be the end goal of your relationship so mm-hmm. If we're if you're enjoying that content, you find other people like, hey, you know what? I've had people come up to me in the last few weeks that are like, hey, my marriage is in trouble, and you know we talked, we talked it through. But at the end of the day, I was like, you know, you're also going to want to dive into some content that's going to help you mm-hmm. um, maintain focus and maintain um, perspective. Yeah. And I think in, uh, my hope is that Engaging Walk does that for 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 people, but uh, another 
people that like we you, we learned a lot from was like the Kylo show. Mm-hmm. So share the content, let people know about it. We thank you guys for all that. Um, but Ooh. sorry to cut you in, uh, cut cut you off. Um, can I share one more thing? Yeah, absolutely. We we have plenty of time. <laughs> So one more thing that I think is good to grow in faith together is to speak life to one another. Like use and the you like use the word of God to like prophesy <laughs> into your 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 men. Yeah, tell or the your, cam- show the camera. Prophesy to to your men or to your 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 woman. You know, like speak the word of God over them. And I think because that is like the medicine to the soul to the spirit, and it's just you know do the great thing for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, so the assignment for this week, what we got for you guys, is we want you guys to give us three ways mm-hmm. in which uh, you and your partner partner can grow together in faith. Yeah. Um, what sort of things do you like to do that will help you guys grow in faith together? Mm-hmm. And be intentional. Like, okay, so what does it look like in you know this week or in three months? And uh, also have, you know, well... If your woman wants to do it, because I know men doesn't like write down, like check it, you know, keep it, you know, and then see the the growth, you know. And I think as as you in, intentional, it will re, the relationship will re, reward you back, you know. That's yeah, true. All right, so this is Drake and Ruby, and uh, with Engaging Walk, we wanted to thank you guys for tuning in. We hope that you can take our Engaging Walk and make it your own. Yeah. Stay tuned for next week's episode when we discuss about love maps. It's going to be a really fun topic, uh, love maps. Yeah. Find out more about that next week, every Monday. So don't forget to click the follow button. Mm-hmm. And this is Drake and Ruby with Engaging Walk. Signing out. Bye-bye. Bye.